News Talk New England Sports Zone here with none but the only and Jamie. Um, talk to me first of all about being here in Worcester and what that's been like for you. Um, yeah, it's been special. I have a lot of family members uh, close and we had a great group of guys. I think we gel really well. Coaching staff's great. Um, ballpark staff, everything. It's a beautiful ballpark. Um, weather's been okay, but yeah. uh, I've enjoyed my time for sure. You got, uh, I was, after 11 years, you've got called up to the big leagues. Um, talk to me about that experience. First of all, um, when you got the call, what was that like? What was the, like going through the body? Yeah, uh, a lot of emotion. Um, Trace called me and I just kind of wanted to make sure that he wasn't kidding or anything. Um, I just lost a lot of tears. Uh, my wife and uh, baby were with me in Charlotte, which was great. Uh, I called my parents immediately and told them and uh, kind of was on a flight within like three hours. So just try to collect my thoughts. My phone was blowing up. And uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a dream come true. A lot of times the media puts that out like right away. Um, as soon as they find out about it, they'll leak it out. Um, did you did your family hear about it from you directly, or did they hear about it like from the media first or something like that? No, I, I called my parents right away as soon as I Good. found out. Um, and then you know you kind of have to keep it hush hush because yeah. it doesn't leave that time and whatnot. So thank God no one put it on Facebook or <laughs> tweeted it or something. But yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a special call. And I mean, both of my parents were together at the time in, in uh, Coles, so I didn't have to make two calls, and uh, it was great. <laughs> Talk to me about the experience when you got to Fenway, um, meeting Alex Gore, everybody up there. Um, what was that like for you? It was awesome. I mean, I, I was in a big league camp uh, this year, so I think it was important for me to have, see familiar faces and know all of the coaching staff and a lot of the, the team. And um, they accepted me with open arms, and I could go and be myself. I didn't feel like I was walking on eggshells or anything like it can be sometimes when you're a rookie. But... Yeah, it was cool. I felt comfortable. Everyone gave me confidence and support and just, hey, you deserve to be here and go out and play. Nice. That's what's Talk to me about your upbringing. What was that like for you growing up? And... Um, yeah, for sure. I'm an only child, so um, I think that's, that's kind of unique. You don't see many only children. Um, but I had a lot of cousins close, so I, I didn't feel too, you know, excluded and all of that but it was awesome yeah my parents um, they gave me every opportunity possible I moved to Arizona where you could play baseball year-round and um, yeah they had me in travel ball and you know make sure that I was a good student and all of those things so uh, I'm very fortunate to you know have the upbringing that I did. Academics always first that's a good thing. Yeah my dad always <laughs> would say books before ball he had a rule he's like look you come home you do your homework finish it, you could do whatever you want. So I kind of just got in that habit of drop the backpack, finish it, and you could go play. Yeah. Um, talk to me. To, um, we asked you the other day during an interview the other day, they asked you, um, this is Men's Mental uh, men's mental Health Awareness Month. Talk to me a little bit about mental health and your struggles. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's good that it's starting to be talked about more and more in today's society for sure because everyone goes through their bouts. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really had to dive into the mind and this game is demanding and it's tough on uh, being away from your family and the failures of it all with having, you know, big expectations. So, um, I mean, I've been in therapy for years. I'm, I'm big into my meditation and, you know, making sure that my mind is right, um, for life. Um, and it's transferred, you know, onto the field for sure. If you had to give somebody else advice, somebody younger, um, like younger athlete, just some another young man, um, on mental health, and, and what would that advice be? Um, just, I mean, it, it's important to talk to somebody. I think a lot of times we try to like suppress our feelings or how we're feeling or invalidate them, um, and whether someone's struggling more or they have it worse, it doesn't mean that you don't still feel some of those same effects of that. So yeah, just talk, open up. I think that was the biggest thing for me. I tried to suppress my feelings for so long and then it kind of reared its ugly head. And um, I got to the point where I you know, realized through therapy and meditation and journaling that like, hey, this stuff needs an outlet. It needs to be released. Um, and it's a constant battle for all of us, you know? So. 
being able to voice that and you know kind of get it out and talk through some things is I think one of the first steps for sure to kind of get your mind clear and thinking the right way. Um, let's talk about your game. Uh, how do you think you've been performing? I mean, the media will say like you've been performing this way, you've been performing this way. How do you think you've been performing since you came to Worcester? Um, since I got here, yeah, I think um, you know. Uh, well, I, I always believed in my ability and um, not trying to be something that I'm not. Um, yeah. I know my limitations, what I do well, what I don't need to do well, what I need to work on. So just kind of hammering that home. Like we talked about earlier, I've been playing this is what my 11th season, so I've got a lot of experience and I truly understand myself as a player. So just continuing to go and do that. And, um, you know, my good is good enough and I don't need to be anything other than that. I like how you say that because I always tell people that um, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be yourself. Um, so I like how you said that. Um, we're about to go into the second half of the season. What's the message in the clubhouse right now? Um, I don't know if there really is one per se, um, but we got kind of a new team since once I left it two weeks ago. Yeah. So we got some younger prospects. We got some of our core still here. So, um I think that it, it'll be nice to kind of have a fresh start and work towards, you know, winning the second half um, and just keep doing what we're doing. I mean, everybody's preparing the right way. We care. We're trying. We're trying to win, um, playing hard. So just continue that and, you know, see where the season takes us. Yeah. I'll end on this note. Um, if you were to pen a letter to your younger self, the, the 15-year-old, the 10-year-old, what would that letter say? Oh, man. Just probably just keep going. Um, trust yourself. Trust your gut. Keep good people around you, um, which I've been able to do. I mean, this isn't possible without incredible support system. My wife, my parents, all of my coaches and close friends that I've had. So, yeah, just, you know, I kind of always had this vision in my head of, you know, making it to the major leagues and becoming this person, a husband, a father, a friend, a good son. So... Um, yeah, just, you know, stay right where you are, and it might take a little longer than you thought it was, but, um, you know, stay, stay on the grind for sure.